We've made similar videos talking about accessories for PC, PS4, and Xbox One. So we decided to make one for the Switch because why not? Because love it or hate it, the Nintendo Switch seems to be a console that goes very well with accessories. Today in Game Ranks, we're here to talk about 10 Nintendo Switch accessories you might want to check out. And just to let you know, everything we talk about today will be linked down in the description if you want to check it out. But for now, let's get started with number 10. I'm sure you've heard the rumblings online that the Switch dock can scratch your screen up pretty bad if you aren't careful. So you're definitely going to want to do all you can to prevent that from happening. Because seeing that going in and out of the dock is a main feature of the Switch, you're going to be doing it a lot. And also seeing that the Switch is a handheld console, you're going to be bringing it with you wherever you go. And you know that it's eventually going to come into contact with your zipper or your keys, or you're going to drop it, and it would definitely be nice to have it protected. There are the tempered glass ones that are definitely a little bit more protective, and in my personal opinion, a lot easier to put on. AM Film actually has a pretty good one, and it's like $10 for two of them. So if you screw up applying them like I do, you have two chances to hopefully not suck in doing it. But if you do prefer a normal non-glass one, there is one that is officially licensed by Nintendo that you can pick up. So if you're terrified of scratching your screen just like I am, a screen protector might be a good idea. And next up at number 9, while Nintendo's multiplayer service isn't up yet, once it is, I'm sure we'll be getting a lot of cool multiplayer games to go along with it at some point. Personally, I always like my consoles to have a wired connection, but unfortunately the Switch doesn't have an Ethernet port on the back of it or on the dock, but there is a LAN adapter that you can pick up for the Switch so you can get that wired connection. The dongle is USB to Ethernet, so it's nothing crazy to deal with, and it's pretty small too, so it'll tuck away behind your console or your TV and not make a mess. There is one that's officially licensed by Nintendo, but it's a little expensive. It's between 40 and 50 bucks, which is a little absurd for something like this, but there are other third-party ones that you can get for like $10, which really isn't bad at all. This really isn't an accessory you need to worry about right now because there really aren't any multiplayer games for the Switch. But in a few months, once the multiplayer service starts going live and more games come out, this might be something to keep your eye on. Next up at number 8, as much as I absolutely love the Nintendo Switch, there are definitely some pretty big oversights that go along with the console. For example, not being able to charge your console and use a kickstand at the same time, which I have found to be a huge annoyance. Thankfully, there is a stand that you can buy that lets you play and charge at the same time. There are a few different ones, but it seems like the one that's officially licensed by Nintendo is one of the nicer ones to get. And I think I know what some of you are thinking. Yeah, it does suck that you have to buy an accessory to fix this problem. I know it sucks, but at least you can fix this problem without having to set your switch on top of whatever random shit you find lying around in your house just to have it fall on the floor and break. You're better off being safe than sorry. And coming in at number 7, seeing that the Switch doesn't have the best battery life, which clocks in at about 2.5 to 3 hours if you're playing Breath of the Wild, you're definitely going to be charging it a lot. You're obviously going to be charging your Switch mostly in the dock, but seeing that the dock isn't exactly small and is kind of just a cheap piece of plastic, you're not going to want to be traveling with it too much. But there are other charging methods to make use of if you find yourself traveling a lot. There's the regular AC adapter, which is nice to have, so if you're staying in a hotel or at a friend or family member's house, you can just plug it right into the wall and charge it. Or you can just unplug the one that comes with the console from the dock and bring that one with you. A car charger may also be a good idea if you're on a road trip and you need Breath of the Wild to get you through that drive. And then there's also the portable charger, which is a good option if you're on planes a lot or just don't have access to a power outlet. But with the portable chargers, you do have to make sure you don't get one that has an output that's too low to charge the Switch, because if you do that, it won't be powerful enough to actually charge it. So you're definitely going to have to do your research before you go running out to buy one. And up next, number six, if there are any of you that bought the Nintendo Switch and still aren't playing Breath of the Wild, come on, what, what are you doing? I mean, do I really need to say anything else? And next up at number five, I think we can all agree that a case is an obvious must-have. I feel like just throwing it in your bag or a backpack is just asking for trouble, and thankfully there are a ton of different cases out there to suit your needs. There are smaller cases that will only hold the console with both Joy-Cons attached and a few games, which is something that is fine for someone like me who just wants a little bit more protection when I put it in my backpack. Then there are bigger travel cases that fit the console, Joy-Cons, Joy-Con grip, the dock, and all the cables you need to go along with it. It's pretty big and kind of hefty, it kind of looks like a smaller suitcase that's kind of wide. And then there's also a Nintendo Switch backpack that I actually kind of just want to use as a regular backpack. It's pretty cool looking. It has little compartments for your console and all its accessories, but I don't know who this backpack is actually made for. It made it pro players, maybe? It says Nintendo Switch right on the front of the bag, and I feel like wearing that, you may just be asking to get robbed. Like, hey, look what I'm wearing on my backpack. There's something expensive in here. So I don't know. I'd maybe be a little bit careful with that bag. And up next, number four, the Switch has an onboard memory of 32 gigabytes, and once you start buying yourself some games, and then add on some DLC, and then also take into account the space the OS is actually going to take up, you're definitely going to want to expand your memory. 
And the Switch does support micro SD cards up to two terabytes, which don't even exist yet, which is kind of cool. You don't necessarily need to go crazy with the speeds, but you'll definitely want to get at least a class 10 card. And just to give you an idea on what you're dealing with, Breath of the Wild clocks in at about 13 gigs, and Dragon Quest Heroes is actually 32 gigs, so you can't play it without upgrading your storage space. You could also buy games physically, which don't actually install on the console, so you can save some space that way, but most of those indie titles that are coming out are going to be digital only, so you're going to run out of space fast if you don't upgrade. There are a ton of different capacities to choose from, ranging from all different prices, so if you aren't looking to completely empty your wallet, there are some affordable options to choose from. Next up on number three, like I said before, there are definitely some oversights and cons that go along with the Switch, and not being able to charge your Joy-Cons while playing in TV mode is one of them. The only way to charge your Joy-Cons out of the box is to have them attached to the console itself while the console is charging. But Nintendo does have a charging grip that fixes this problem, but it's 30 bucks, which is a little expensive for something like this, and honestly, I think this is something that should have come with the Switch. This would have made so much more sense, and having to buy it kind of sucks. Thankfully, the Joy-Cons reportedly have a 20-hour battery life, so you might not need Need this thing ever. Whenever I'm done playing in TV mode, I just slide the Joy-Cons off the grip and slide them onto the console to charge. I've been using the Switch heavily since it came out and I have yet to run into any problems with my Joy-Cons dying or even coming close to dying. And I've been playing in and out of TV mode and portable mode, so you might not need this. But if you're playing mostly in TV mode and your Joy-Cons are dying, this might be something you should probably look at. Next up at number two, getting extra Joy-Cons is definitely going to be something to get if you're looking forward to playing some good multiplayer games or if you just like to have backup controllers. There are also people like me that purchased a Switch with the gray Joy-Cons, but after seeing the neon ones in person, kind of started to regret getting the gray ones, and now I might have to make a purchase and pick up the neon ones. But seriously, once games like Overcooked come out, you'll definitely want to have more controllers, or even if and when Mario Party gets announced, more controllers are definitely going to be a must-have. They are unfortunately $80, but depending on what games you're playing, you might need them. And up next, number one, we have the Pro Controller. The Switch ships with two Joy-Con controllers and a Joy-Con grip, which I've been using to play Breath of the Wild, and honestly, I think it's fine. But if you want a more traditional feeling controller, which I completely understand, there is the Pro Controller. There's no denying that it's a bit more comfortable and has a more premium feel, but I have one, and I still go to grab my Joy-Con grip over the Pro. And the price is a little steep. The controller is going to run you $70, which is more than a PS4 or Xbox One controller would cost you, so that's definitely something to be aware of. Like I said before, a game like Breath of the Wild or even Shovel Knight played just fine on the Joy-Con grip, but when games like Mario Kart 8, Splatoon 2, or hopefully Super Smash Bros. if that ever comes out, games like that will definitely play better on the Pro Controller. I know when Splatoon 2 comes out, that's when my controller is going to be used pretty heavily. Also, can I just say that I love that the controller has a clear shell. When I had an N64 as a kid, I always had clear controllers, and having a clear Pro Controller is so cool and just kind of hits that nostalgia factor for me. So those are 10 Nintendo Switch accessories that are worth checking out. But I want to hear from you guys, so meet us down in the comments and let us know if there are any accessories you use that we may have missed, and how do you guys feel about there being so many accessories for the Switch? And liking this video really helps us out, and if you guys didn't know, we put up videos like this every single day, and the best way to get them is with a subscription. But thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time right here on GameRanks.